In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And to prepare ourselves to worthily celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us first acknowledge we are sinners in need of God's healing and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory, through Christ our Lord. First reading, a reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, Leave your country, your family, and your father's house to the land I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name so famous that it will be used as a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who slight you. All the tribes of the earth shall bless themselves by you. So Abram went as the Lord told him. The word of the Lord.
a second reading, a reading of the letter of St. Paul to Timothy. With me bear the hardships for the sake of the good news, relying on the power of God who has saved us and called us to be holy, not because of anything we ourselves have done, but for his own purpose and by his own grace. The grace had already been granted to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has only been revealed by the appearing of our Saviour, Christ Jesus. He abolished death and has proclaimed life and immortality through the good news, the word of the Lord. From the bright cloud, the Father's voice was heard. This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to him. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain where they could be alone. There in their presence he was transfigured. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as light. Suddenly Moses and Elijah appeared to them. They were talking with him. Then Peter spoke to Jesus. Lord, he said, it is wonderful for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when suddenly a bright cloud covered them with shadow, and from the cloud there came a voice which said, This is my son, the beloved. He enjoys my favor. Listen to him. When they heard this, the disciples fell on their faces, overcome with fear. But Jesus came up and touched them. Stand up, he said. Do not be afraid. And when they raised their eyes, they saw no one but only Jesus. As they came down from the mountain, Jesus gave them this order. Tell no one about the vision until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. The story we just listened to of this transfiguration of Jesus is so important that we hear this story twice a year. On the second Sunday of Lent every year and on the 6th of August every year. But why do we have this story? The simple answer is that as Jesus was going about his ministry or mission in Galilee, his divinity was covered or clothed by his humanity. Despite his preaching, curing the sick and miracles, many could not see beyond his humanity. But on Mount Tarbor, God's light burst forth from the body of Jesus and he was transfigured with the result his clothing became brilliant as lightning. And for the first time, his three disciples, Peter, James, and John, saw beyond his humanity and saw his divinity truly radiate. However, the transfiguration had a double significance in that firstly, it did something very precious for Jesus. At this stage, Jesus had taken the decision to go to Jerusalem, which meant the cross and death. Obviously, he had to be absolutely sure that this was the right decision before he could go on. 
And so on the mountaintop, he received a double approval of his decision. The first approval came from Moses, the supreme lawgiver to Israel, and Elijah, the first and the greatest of the old prophets. But the second and most important approval came from God. This is my beloved. Listen to him. And secondly, it did something very precious for the disciples in that they were given a great grace of being shown who Jesus really was. They were given this grace in order to strengthen them to be his special witnesses in the world, particularly after his death, when so many will be confused and full of doubt. But for them, cross or no cross, they had God's own voice acknowledge Jesus as his son. And so they were given the strength they would need to face all future events with great certainty and belief in Jesus as their Messiah. But like the three disciples in our gospel, each one of us here have been chosen by virtue of our baptism to be special witnesses to God in our world by allowing his presence to shine through us. But just how well do we really let his presence shine through us? Truth be told, none of us allow that light to shine as it should shine through us. Due to a build-up of sin, of laziness in our spiritual lives, pride, selfishness, greed, failure to perform acts of charity, failure to even recognize our sins, all of which add up to prevent us from reflecting God's presence in our world as we should. But Lent is our extra special time of grace for us to reflect on our own inner beauty and ask God to heal those areas that overshadow us and might prevent us from truly reflecting his light. Now, though it may be hard for us, but the end result will make all the difference, not only to us personally, but also to our world. And to help us in this, like the three disciples, we too are given a very important moment of transfiguration. Now, there are many such moments, such as an act of love or forgiveness. But the most important one for us and unlike the disciples, who only had a one-off transfiguration, ours happens every day at this altar, when the bread and wine is transfigured during the consecration into the body and blood of Christ. And the purpose of this transfiguration is that we may be nourished and strengthened to be God's special witnesses in our world. But the only question is, do we have the eyes of faith to really see this transfiguration? To see beyond the humble disguise of bread and wine and really see and know it is our Lord. And so allow ourselves to be changed and strengthened by this transfiguration? Or is it just a wasted gift of grace? And if it is a waste, then we really have to ask, why do we come to Mass? Why do we receive communion if we don't really believe it is him?
and we stand now to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, the Father of light, shone through his Son at the transfiguration. May we ask him for the light of his grace to help us to live to the full our Christian lives. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope, Pope Francis, for our Bishop Eamon, and for all whom the Lord has called to minister to his people. May God's Holy Spirit be their guide. Lord, hear us. Lord, we pray for each other. May we show in our lives love we see in Jesus. May we be strengthened in service as we live together in our community. And may those who find it hard to follow Jesus find courage. Lord, hear us. Lord, <clears throat> then we use this time of Lent where we see it as a special opportunity we are given to develop our discipleship and deepen our personal disciple as we strive to follow Christ more closely in reflecting the transfiguration in our own lives. Lord, hear us. <clears throat> May our loved ones, friends and neighbours experience God's protection. We pray for those who are ill and in pain, for those who are sad and hurting, May they find strength in our support at this time. Lord, hear us. We remember very specially in our Mass today young people who may feel called by the Lord to ministry in his church. In these very challenging times, they may hear their hearts the word of Jesus today. Do not be afraid. And be strengthened by the knowledge that he is always with them on their journey. Lord, hear us. We pray for our dead. We pray for the recently deceased, Brian Kelly, Nancy Bard, Mary Mullen, John Aloysius Gray, Teresa Cowan, Jer Jerry McLean, Pauline White, Rose Cottages. Pauline's funeral mass will take place here tomorrow morning at half 11. And Oliver Breen, Warren Fold, Oren's funeral, or Oliver's funeral mass will take place here on Monday morning at 10 o'clock. And we pray at this time for Joseph McConville, Sarah Sloan, Jarenda Amaro, Peter McQuaid, Matthias and Rosa Martins, Patrick and Matilda Donnelly. We pray especially during this holy mass for Martin Connolly, whose month's mind occurs at this time. Dr. Joel Fernan, Sister Agnes Collins, Mary Austin. And we pray tomorrow for the Conglaves family, Julie and Brendan Litter, Elizabeth Carson, Sheila McCann, Peter Guy, Gerald and Lucy Grimley, Noel Kelly, Raphael Bonka, Aurelia and Josie de Olivia, Gabriel Bow, Faramistio Dos Damas, Maria de Fatima Bong, Telephone Tillman, Maria Victor, Isabel Moes, Joaquim da Costa, Manuel Correa, Matthias Gamma, 
Joseph Acosta Pinto, and Maria Sacramento. May their souls and souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. And for a few moments in the quietness of our own hearts, we now make our own private prayers and petitions. Lord, hear us. <clears throat> Gracious God, hear the prayers of those who turn to you. May we be transfigured by your grace and so enjoy everlasting glory with you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. We now have our Sunday collection, please. And as the collection has been taken up, I just bring a few notices to your attention. This coming Monday at 5 o'clock, there will be first confessions for St. John the Baptist School and the Irish Unit here in this church. And for the second P2 class at St. John the Baptist School on Wednesday at 5 o'clock. And then first confession for the presentation school will take place in St. Patrick's Church this Tuesday at 5 o'clock. And we offer our deepest congratulations to those who made the sacrament of confirmation earlier today here in this church. And this weekend, the church gate collection will be in need of the people of Turkey and Syria after the recent earthquakes. And the St. Vincent de Paul will take up the collection on behalf of the parish. As part of our Lenten journey, there will be Stations of the Cross here in this church tomorrow evening and every Sunday evening during Lent at 7 o'clock, and all are welcome to attend. And the sisters from St. Elizabeth Convent, Belarus, will hold a stall of their crafts to help support their work. Their stall will be in St. Patrick's Church next Thursday and Friday at the 10 a.m. Mass, and here in St. John's for the weekend Masses. Now, one of the sisters will speak at the Masses as to the work, but primarily it's to help their work with orphanages and those with disabilities and mental disabilities. So they'll be selling stuff, things like icons and that, which are all handmade, to help support their work. And that'll take place here next week. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, 
on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a cinema way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Amen our Archbishop, Michael our Auxiliary Bishop and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him.
Breathe in me, O Holy Spirit, that my thoughts may all be holy. Act in me, O Holy Spirit, that my work too may be holy. Draw my heart, O Holy Spirit, that I love but what is holy. Strengthen me, O Holy Spirit, to defend all that is holy. Guard me then, O Holy Spirit, that I always may be holy. And let us pray. <clears throat> As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us while still on earth to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you.